This is the Apple Park. Apple invested $5 billion to make the ultimate office. Cafes, state-of-the-art gyms, endless gardens, walking paths, breathtaking architecture, all of it designed to keep their teams energized. But today, it's empty. Now everyone's sitting at home, isolated, no sense of routine, no social energy, no beautiful gardens, no epic gyms, no one to cook them healthy meals. This is the reality of remote work. So the question is, can you energize teams without the immersive environment? Thankfully, energy can be acquired in many ways. It comes from doing more of what makes you feel alive, from learning and growing, from living active, from eating healthy, from getting out of the house. These don't require an office. You just have to know how to harness the medium. You have to know how to use things like a chat box in ways you've never used them before. You have to look at things like Slack or Zoom and see the same thing Apple saw when they looked at offices. Endless possibility. So let that video serve as proof that energy is indeed possible from anywhere. What's up? I'm Ryan Chartrand. I'm the CEO over at X Team. And today I want to talk about how to keep a remote team energized. Now, I mentioned I'm from X Team. We are a company that provides these high performing on demand teams of developers to the world's leading brands. We're 100% remote, distributed across more than 50 countries for more than the last decade. And, you know, we've been a part of the future of work movement for a long time. And now it feels like overnight, everyone is part of that future with us. So I want to share some, some knowledge, some wisdom. I want to prove that the impossible is possible. Energize teams from anywhere, because I think that's a big concern. You know, how do we keep people energized when we don't have these beautiful, uh, immersive environments to, to keep them connected, to keep them uh, moving forward together and having that forward moving energy. And that's what we're all about. Our tagline is keep moving forward because everything we do every day is about trying to help build that energy for our teams and keep them moving forward. So with that, let's begin. So I know the urge with, with moving to remote, with having everyone working from home now and, and seemingly so disconnected, I know the urge is going to be to just recreate the office experience. You know that the solution to having people so disconnected is to just bring them back together through through what we know, you know, through the office style approach. But when we try to recreate the office, we can actually start to kind of chip away at that energy that we're trying to build. You know, I'll give you an example because the goal really is not to recreate the office. You know, I'm seeing some companies right now forcing their employees to sit in a Zoom call all day just so they can see each other working, you know, just so that they can try and recreate that office experience. But having them sit there all day like this, it drives demotivation because they feel like there's a lack of trust. You know, it causes stress, it kills focus, it kills productivity. Uh, you know, en energy actually comes from less meetings, less time on Zoom in many cases. So again, the goal is not to recreate the office. It's, it's to harness this new medium and these, these new environments to help energize your team. Because, you know, after all, when Apple created this epic Apple Park, th they were trying to replicate a standard office. They wanted to think differently. You know, they wanted to create the most energizing version of an office that exists, a, a space that makes you remember that you are Apple, that this is where you belong. And, and if the goal is keeping teams energized, we really just have to look at where energy can come from and do more of that. So energy can come from doing more of what you love, from your environment, you know, what you're surrounded by. It can come from things like socializing, it comes from belonging, a sense of belonging, that sense of you are Apple, you belong here, that that, that epic Apple Park gives you. And there's many more you could add to the list, but you know, we've only got 20 minutes and I want to get you as much value as, as quickly as possible. But if we think about the Apple Park again, you know, they were doing basically these things just in a very expensive way, you know, gyms and, and walking paths and greenery and, and in a beautiful theater where you can see Billie Eilish perform live. All of it is basically helping their employees to do more of what they love in a beautiful ergonomic environment, getting plenty of exercise, feeling part of something bigger than themselves, surrounded by this sort of innovative architecture. So let's 
dive into these and, I, and I'll show you the ways that my company X team is generating a lot of energy for our teams from doing all of these things remotely. So doing more of what you love, this is really by far the most powerful source of energy that I think there is. Just remember back to the last time that you were you know, lit up, that you, that you came alive, that you felt excitement running through your veins, that you were sort of hyped up beyond belief. You were maybe in the zone doing something that you love and most likely you were doing something very new and, 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 and exciting in its sense just because it was new and fresh and different. So doing more of the things we love, more of the things that make us come alive. It's so important to, you know, have this to make the remote work lifestyle more productive. You know, taking more breaks to do the things that we love is, is, is really essential. That we, we actually built an entire framework around ensuring that every X-teamer in our company has all of the motivation, the resources, the funding, the opportunities, everything they need to do those things that they love as much as possible. And it's a framework called Seasons. So I'm gonna play a, a quick little video for you that uh, gives you a brief overview of what Seasons are all about. Seasons are the heart of the X-Team community experience, giving you inspiration and motivation combined with a multitude of different ways to commit to learning, growing, and doing more of what you love. Each season comes with its own set of bounties, which are challenges designed to help energize you, to do more of the things you already love to do, to do more of the things that make you feel alive and give you that greater sense of well-being. Bounties earn you coins that you can use in the vault. Each season brings with it new additions to the vault, like exclusive X-Team collectibles, plus cool products that fit the theme of the season. Each season introduces new events to bring X-Teamers together, such as quests, x outposts, workshops, and other events. The x outpost is a hacker house that changes location every month that X-Teamers can visit to work and have fun together. And throughout the year, you'll find various other unique events you'll want to attend to grow and chill with other X-Teamers. Last but not least, each season will introduce new ways to utilize your Unleash Plus membership. Unleash Plus gets you $2,500 a year to spend on a variety of activities that help you learn, grow, and yep, you guessed it, help you get energized. Whether it's a gym membership to get you active, a babysitter to help you get out more, video games to bring you new adventures, and so many other unique opportunities, Unleash Plus has you covered, and each season will bring new additions. Seasons at X-Team are built to energize you. Now it's on to you to capitalize on the opportunities that will bring you fun, momentum, and adventure to your life. May the X be with you. Again, another uh, example of how to use video to hype up and energize people. But like the video said, we have these, these bounties and they're like micro challenges that are meant to energize you. You know, there are things like, uh, here we have trying out a new form of exercise to get those endorphins going or cooking something new with your kids or listening to a podcast from a genre that you've never tried or maybe trying out a new programming language or a framework or taking a new course or reading a new book or, you know, whatever it might be. And, and we'll even sponsor and fund whatever you want to do so that you really have no excuse not to do it and get energized. So we have a program called Unleash Plus, and it gives you $2,500 a year to spend on whatever energizes you, you know, on all of the things that make you feel alive, all of the things that, that might make you light up, you know, so there's no excuse to not feel energized, to not take on those bounty challenges, to not get out of the house. So, you know, we'll, we'll sponsor your movie tickets or, or your cafe days or your co-working memberships, especially parents really love those. Uh, you know, we'll sponsor your date nights, your, your restaurants, your babysitter you might need so you can actually go out and do these things or your dog sitter if you wanna go do a, a weekend getaway. We'll help you plan a weekend getaway or, or do some adventure sports or fly to a conference or go find a meetup group. And if you don't have local meetups, you know, don't use that as an excuse, start your own meetup and we'll be your first sponsor uh, of, of your meetup. And uh, you know, we'll sponsor that gym membership, um, well, the running shoes you might need. Although, I can't go to the gym because I don't have new shoes. We'll sponsor your shoes. 
We'll get you fresh produce to make sure you can start up that new meal plan to go with your fitness program. Maybe you need uh, new books or online courses or maker tools uh, to help you build things from home or, or music gear to help you learn an instrument. You have basically no excuse to not be doing more of what you love, to not be living uh, an active, healthy lifestyle, to not be challenging yourself to capitalize on life. And best of all, if you do the challenges, you get rewarded with coins and coins you can spend in this cool store called The Vault. It's a collectible store. You can either buy something tangible, which is a very powerful thing in remote teams. We don't get a lot, we don't have an office, so we don't have much tangible uh, connection to the brand, to the company, to the values, to the, to the culture. So having something tangible is very powerful or you can donate it to a cause, like you see over here on the right, St. Jude Children's Hospital. Any cause you want, we'll, we'll donate uh, you know, $50 to, for example. And so rewards are, of course, another form of energy in themselves. Getting that package at the door uh, is something very special and, and very energizing, the whole unboxing experience. And it's something exclusive that few people get to do because there's a very limited amount of all of these uh, collectibles. And when you make items, as you can see some of these here, they really resonate with, with our people. Maybe you'll make items that resonate with your people and their values, but creating something that resonates in itself creates a sense of belonging and that triggers more energy, more excitement. And so hopefully you're starting to see here what's happening is to lead an energized remote team, it's not about doing one thing. There's no little one secret. It's about building on top of things to where Every day there's an energy boost sort of right around the corner, um, you know, coming from at least somewhere. And you'll see this stacking up as we go. Now, here's a, here's a little minute, one minute video that we made that will give you a taste of what that lifestyle looks like and feels like. So there you go. People are, you know, they're getting energized, doing more of what they love. And if you want evidence that this actually works, I've pulled up this, you know, our glass door, go check out our glass door. You'll see the proof, <laughs> you know, you'll see that doing the things that make them come alive, it, it, it really makes an impact for them. And it makes them more productive for our partners and, and more productive for our partners means more business for us. So now that said, I can hear the Apple executives uh, with, inside of Apple Park saying, well, hey, they're still at home. It's a very uninspiring environment, a very de-energizing environment. You need to spend the $5 billion. And so when it comes to your environment serving as an energy source, this is again where Unleash Plus comes in because we can help you design the ultimate environment You know that would rival your desk at the Apple Park. You know, you can use Unleash Plus to decorate your home office however you like. Put some posters up, uh, some paintings up, maybe get a cool shiplap background if you want. Get something for your desk. I got my cool chrome dino uh, figure set that I keep here. Uh, you know, if you don't have a, a great window view, then, you know, get some greenery to put in your, in your, uh, in your office. <laughs> some ex teamers have just greenery all, all over the place. It's amazing. Uh, or, or go, just go, go live somewhere with a great view. You can live anywhere now, you know, get, get what you need for your ergonomics, get a cool, you know, ergonomic chair, a standing desk or, or whatever you might need, an anti-fatigue mat on the floor. You get to customize your home office to make it the ultimate environment for you, for helping you specifically stay energized, unlike the Apple Park, where you get whatever they've designed and, and considered perfect. You get full control over it in every way. So that is your environment. Let them have control over it and support them. 
The next thing is, uh, next way you can get energy is from socializing. And, you know, we're human beings. We need human interaction as much as we need water. Now, in, a, in an office, socializing happens very naturally. You got the water coolers, you got walking by people, you got lunch times, all this kind of stuff. And, and people feed off of that energy. Remotely, you have to be very intentional about making it happen. You also have sort of varying degrees of people who even need it, you know, because if they're at home with their families now, uh, or, or they live with whoever, you know, they might not need much socializing outside of work. And so your role in orchestrating social events is really about finding who needs them and ensuring that anything that you do is guaranteed to drive value and to drive energy for them. And so I'll give you a good example. We do a social event called Versus, and it's an asynchronous event, first of all, uh, and it's all about energy and value. It's, it's a 24 hour steps competition among a set of teams. And so whichever team can rack up the most amount of steps on their step, step trackers, maybe it's on their wrists or their phone, wherever, whichever team racks up the most steps in a 24 hour period wins the competition. It's absolutely intense. Most events end with, you know, just a few hundred steps of a difference, not in this example here, but uh, <laughs> everyone's just biting their nails watching this thing and, and winning the competition means that you get more coins. And of course, more coins means more items you can get in the vault. And again, more energy that comes from getting those things from the vault. It's a cycle of energy that just keeps going. And Versus has been an awesome jumpstart and, and gateway for a lot of people to get into a, a fitness routine, which is super healthy and super energizing uh, when you're working from home. And, and it gets those endorphins going more regularly. And it's because Versus, it's super easy. You know, it's energizing, it's rewarding. You get the coins for it. And that just dominoes into getting onto a meal plan and all these sort of energizing, healthy decisions. We also do here a, a rallying cry. And a rallying cry is, is a great way during our Versus event to just get the channel filled with these photos to hype each other up. And again, a simple chat box is bringing people together in this massively energizing way if you just get creative on how to use it. You don't need fancy tools, just innovate the same way that Apple took that, that big plot of land and made it into this beautiful oasis garden, beautiful park. You know, And the other thing is make it as asynchronous as possible, like this, this event here where they can participate at any point in their day. You know, if you want a lot of people to engage in something, it's gotta be a synchronous. The more real time it is, generally the less people that are gonna show up because you're, you know, you're pulling them away from their, their focus time and, and really they want to engage on their time. So for example, if you're gonna do a, a happy hour, I know a lot of people are talking about doing remote happy hours right now, this is real time. And so make sure it has guaranteed value if you're gonna do anything real time. Make sure it has guaranteed energy that's going to come out of it. You know, most people don't actually plan these remote happy hours. They just say, ah, oh, we'll get on a Zoom call and whatever happens, happens. And they become inconsistent. Attendance drops off pretty quickly a few weeks later. We make ours into more of like a show with these set segments for roundtable discussions. Uh, we'll do a quick arcade game, competition segment, et cetera. You, you can come up with these segments, but it's a predictable flow and formula every time. It's consistent. Uh, you have to plan for it well, and don't kind of treat these as unimportant if you want them to last. It comes from many years of, of uh, trying to make these last. So we also have, uh, there you go. So make it predictable and consistent. Now we also have our own radio station where we do these live events as well. And so, you know, I, I said real time isn't great, but it can be, you know, it, it is a nice energy boost for those people who are available because they get to come together all at the same time. Uh, but on our radio station, we do these, these live competitions, like guessing which song is playing. Uh, we also have some real time games that we built with Slack bots. We have some dice rolling games where, you know, you can battle bosses together. Uh, we're working on a Fortnite style Slack game. And, and again, these games are, are, are great for our audience of developers, obviously. And again, you, you, participating in these events, you gain coins, you can use them in the vault. It's the cycle of energy. All of it keeps playing together. We also have our own async conference, asynchronous conference. We call it Forward Conf. 
And it's a podcast aired on our radio station, in addition to a bunch of roundtable discussions in our Slack channels. And again, more with each live event comes coins and, and uh, more collectibles added to the vault. And again, it's a, this big cycle of energy. We're building and we're building here. Oh, by the way, if you want to check out ForwardConf, check it out on our blog, xc.com slash blog. But again, we're, we're trying to create this cycle of energy, right? We're building and building more and more opportunities to where someone might get an energy hit at any moment. And it all starts adding up. You know, the goal isn't to get everyone doing everything. The goal is to make sure that on any given day, in some way or another, someone's getting an energy boost from us. And that's leading to more productivity, which then leads, of course, to happier clients and more growth for our company. So why wouldn't you invest in this? And when times are, are normal, we also socialize in person throughout the year for anyone who wants to. It's not required, but an option for anyone who wants to and needs that level of socializing. We have this, which is the X Outpost. There are these co-living setups that we do in a different country every month, places like South Africa, Thailand, Costa Rica, you name it. So a, a group of X teamers will assemble in an Airbnb mansion somewhere and, and they live and they work and they explore that country together, which is of course a very energizing thing to do. We also have the X Summit, which is one weekend of just coming together in, in multiple cities around the world in these epic venues like castles and mansions and, and doing activities that, that energize us. It's also an online event simultaneously. So no matter where you are, you can take part and get that energy boost. And these big events allow you to create that sense of being part of something bigger than yourself. And it's that sense of belonging that is a very powerful form of energy. So I want to talk about that last one on the list here, belonging. Belonging is so powerful. I think it's really why Apple invested that $5 billion into that physical representation of their brand. They get to walk through those doors every day and be reminded visually and, and tangibly what they're a part of and, and why they're a part of it. They get that sense of belonging injected into them every single day. And, and remotely, belonging can be found in many ways. I think it's most prevalent in very tangible moments. Things like, you know, the, the collectible store, the vault, and, and having these tangible representations of the brand that you can hold. And, 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 you know, I've got one on now. I put it on and I feel, I got the hat, I put it on and I feel like I'm part of something. So that's, that's incredibly powerful. Um, you also feel belonging from events where you get to hang out with people who share your values. And one of the most important ways you can feel it remotely is through all hands meetings. These, you know, for Apple, anything that they do in their Steve Jobs theater is a special experience. You got the lights turned down, you got the loud music, <laughs> you know, human beings are naturally going to pay more attention and we get a lot more energized in these sorts of cinematic settings. It's why we love movie theaters for, for watching blockbuster movies. In a remote setting, you, you know, you basically have Zoom and you know, it's, it's <laughs> Zoom is Zoom. It's, it can be awkward sometimes and it's certainly not a, a cinematic experience. And while I really love, you know, this Zoom gallery view for things like a happy hour where you really wanna see everyone and, and, and get a sense of how everyone's doing, it can really be your worst enemy when it comes to something like an all hands meeting. I saw a great example of this recently with Simon Sinek, who I'm a big fan of, and he was doing an all hands type of meeting and he went into this beautiful, inspiring speech, but because it was Zoom and because everyone's cameras were turned on, it was very difficult to focus on his inspiring speech because as humans, we like to focus on how our peers are reacting, you know, what our peers are doing. Why is Lisa, you know, putting her, her head on her fist and looking so bored? What's happening in their backgrounds? There's just too many distractions pulling attention away from this big, powerful moment that Simon was trying to create. So you have to capitalize on what you have available to you for these, these big moments, these, these important moments. So use a recorded video, for example, instead. Use the format that's gonna get people to actually watch, you know, to, to not be distracted while they're watching it. Give yourself the best chance 
for creating that sense of belonging. Now, what we do is we try to give that cinematic experience and, and we keep Zoom as sort of a secondary part of the equation. That's great for a breakout afterwards, but you know, use something like YouTube to stream a well-produced high quality video that excites and energizes and reminds them why they belong with you. And so hopefully you're seeing it. You know, this is why Apple spent hundreds of millions of dollars just on the Steve Jobs Theater alone and, and then billions on their architecture because there's value in creating an experience, an experience that reminds your employees why they matter, that, you know, how you all share the same values, why they belong. So our town halls and our, and our annual holiday party and our annual distributed retreats, they all aim to achieve this feeling and they all utilize video to make it more special, to feel special. And I can't stress enough how important video is as a tool for remote teams. I've mentioned it many times today and how much it can really upgrade the energy levels in your company and the feeling of belonging in your company. Also on belonging, you know, if your company is hundreds of people, you know, you can start to feel a bit small in, in the bigger picture. So you need to create what I like to call micro belonging. And we do it by letting people join these houses with an X team. And each house has their own sigil, kind of like Game of Thrones. And the houses do friendly competitions and things like verses, which we talked about before, but they also bond and they become these, these little families. We also have things like clubs for every passion topic that you can imagine, photography, gaming, books, even beer here. And you'll see what's cool about each club is that they all have their own bounty challenges. They all have their own micro challenges that they get to do together and create together. And so it's a great solution for bigger companies that need to create a sense of micro belonging as they start to get bigger. I know that this was a lot. There's so much that I didn't even get time for that I, I could talk another 30, 40 hours. <laughs> I was going to say minutes, but it really it's hours uh, on all this. So many things that we're working on right now as well that I wish I could talk to you about. But go back, rewatch and, and get what you can from it. Pause on the pieces you want to get inspired by. But here's my main point one more time. It's not about trying to recreate the office. It's about capitalizing on the medium. And hopefully you've seen that today, that I've taken things like Zoom and Slack and video and, and tried to use these things in unique ways that really energize people. It's, it's about generating energy using any method you can, using the tools that we have in creative ways. You know, imagine yourself as Steve Jobs here, staring at that empty lot before it was the Apple Park. And this is your moment to not recreate the office, but to create the most energizing environment for your team. And you're going to fail many times and that's okay, but, but just keep trying out ideas. Keep moving forward. Teams don't move forward without that energy in place. You have to be intentional about ensuring that they are getting it. They're not going to be productive without energy. They're not going to be unified or motivated without energy. And in a remote setting, you have to be intentional, intentional about making sure it's there. Many companies are going to offer remote work in the years ahead, meaning that, you know, your Epic office isn't going to be a competitive advantage forever. But what will be an advantage is how you're able to make your teams feel part of something bigger than themselves. That is the biggest energy driver there is. Making them feel that sense of belonging despite not having an office, despite not having the Steve Jobs theater to sit in, despite not having the, the Google decompression capsules. And, and the only way you're going to achieve that is by not trying to recreate the office, but by capitalizing on what the remote medium makes possible, taking these tools and doing something with them, utilizing them to create energy and belonging and that sense of something bigger than yourself. You know, remember that despite only having a chat box and only having a, a Zoom, a, you know, an awkward video conferencing tool, hopefully I've proven to you today that when it comes to keeping a team energized, the possibilities are truly endless. So I wish you all the best. If, if you need any help making this massive transition, please reach out to me at ryanandxteam.com. I look forward to the Q&A today and uh, best of luck to you. Cheers.
Ryan Chartrand from X Team. Uh, thanks to everybody here for joining us, Ryan. That was that was awesome. Uh, <laughs> I've, run, I've run quite a few remote teams in in my and that was just a total rethink, man. I mean, really, that was special. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, we've we've worked, we've been doing this for a good ten years now, so it's it did not come overnight. Yep. Um, so let's get into these questions quickly. I know we're, we're up against our break. We'll take about 10 minutes, maybe run a little bit over here as long as that's cool with Igor. Um, what can we do to boost energy when we have a small team and budget? Um, it's a good question. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. So, I mean, a lot of what I showed today, I think, was actually didn't really cost money beyond time. Now, obviously, time costs money as well. So uh, taking out the $2,500 a year thing, for example, let's say we don't have that. Uh, most everything else you can do so long as you make the time for it, right? I mean, it's pretty much just for, uh, I'll give you a good example, actually. We have, I think we're the only company that has a full-time game designer that's not uh, a gaming company. So, I mean, we, we, de we definitely invest in this to where there's full-time people working on this to make this uh, very successful, but it doesn't, you don't have to go all out. Like I said, we've been doing this for 10 years. We're a huge company at this point. Uh, and you know, we need that level of people. If you're a small team, you can do just a sliver of what I what I did. That versus uh, example, you can, you don't need much to pull that off, uh, and it's free to do. You just need Slack, Twist, whatever you want to use. So, just the the real thing you need is to get creative, and that's the hardest part, sadly. <laughs> but uh, if you can do that, definitely uh, just try everything, and you're going to see what works and what doesn't by trying and failing constantly. So. Uh, I think the biggest thing you, you can do is to start trying things. Don't, don't worry about what's not going to work. Just get in there and start trying things out and see what, see what uh, works with your people. Where do you draw the line on, uh, and this is a question here, where, where do you draw the line on these sort of like fun culture activities and maximizing productive hours? Yeah, and it's also, you know, where do you draw the line on doing too much to where you, you sort of overdo it for people to where they're like, where I you feel disingenuous, take, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, like I can't take any more socializing. <laughs> and I think the key I mentioned in the talk as well is everything has to be optional and it has to be very clear to everyone that everything is optional. So I think I also mentioned you, you want to have that energy boost always right around the corner for whoever needs it, but make it all optional. So, I mean, we try to only do one live event per week. We do them on Thursdays. Thursdays are a great time when the week has sort of settled down. You can do it on a Monday, for example where it's just super chaotic. Uh, but by Thursday, you're ready to socialize and kind of have a beer and, and, and sit back for a bit. So we do all of our live events on Thursdays uh, and just one event is enough. And then take break, break weeks, make people yearn for it again because you don't want to overdo it, like I said. Um, but yeah, definitely just make it, a, as long as people know it's optional, you're not going to burn people out on socializing. Okay, next question. This seems like a great program, but I'm concerned that it would drive engagement to X team and not the hiring company. Wow, how do you make sure that that um, you know those from X team feel connected to the hiring company? Yeah, that's really cool, and it helps that we work with a lot of amazing companies like Riot Games. It's not hard to be engaged to one of the biggest make game makers in the in the world or Fox Broadcast. Like we work with a lot of cool people to where that happens naturally. Um, but you know, also what is amazing that we've seen happen over the years is the more that we energize them, the more loyal they become to X Team, the more that they love being a part of this environment. It makes you love every environment. It makes you love your home environment. It makes you love working with the partners we work with. As long as you are getting that energy boost, as long as you are uh, being fulfilled, you feel a sense of belonging, you're going to be good regardless of who we're working with. And so, uh, but yeah, for the most part, it's, it's a very easy situation for us because we're very picky about who we work with. Culture is awesome, and you gave me a bunch of ideas. What is the fastest thing we can do to improve our remote culture? Great question. Fastest thing, wow. Like the right uh, now thing, maybe, you know? Like what could you do right now today? Well, I mean, right now it's a lot of just get people together. These are crazy times, obviously, and, and, and that's what we're doing. We didn't used to do a lot of those happy hours because they, they weren't super successful, to be honest. They eventually fade off, even if you put a lot of work into them. But right now, there's a lot more of a need for it. People want to just come together, so make that happen. But I think the first thing you do if you really want to start making fast action is understand your people. Survey them, talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, whatever you need to do. The answers are lying in the minds of all of your people. They know exactly how they want to get energized, how they want to engage, how they want to socialize. They have all the answers. You just need to talk to them and get inspired by them. 
and then create things that you think will, will drive them up. So the fastest thing, definitely talk to your people. They, like, what does that feedback loop look like so that you can do it at, at scale if you have a relatively, you know, a team more than just a few people? Yeah, so we do it every three months. We, we do a survey. Uh, on top of that, we're asking people every two weeks just how they're doing and we're learning from them constantly. So uh, at the least, a monthly survey. Again, if you want to start doing one-on-ones, just it really depends on the, t- on the size of your company. The bigger you are, probably the more survey route you're going to go. Different levels of energy at various time zones. Different levels of energy. I'm trying to understand if they mean culturally or how do you I get think it's more to- like you have a happy hour on Thursday and like somebody's in Europe and they can have a beer and, you know, somebody's in Seattle and they're like, no, leave me alone. I'm working. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that has that, that is the one thing I struggle with the most because I wish very often that we were in one time zone. It would open up so many more options for us. But because we're in 50 plus countries and a ton of time zones, uh, that that makes it a lot more challenging. What you have to do is just run the same events multiple times if you're going to do um, what do you call it? Uh, live events. And if you that's why we try to do a lot more asynchronous events. The example I gave during the talk was versus. Versus, you go out and you do your steps. You go running, you go walking on your own time. And so you post your steps when you're done. Try to make everything as asynchronous as possible and you're, and you're gonna win. Uh, and that's, that's what we try to attack everything with. But real time is powerful. Like what we're doing right now, there's a, there's a special energy that comes from this, comes from this. And so we've found that our sweet spot is 20 o'clock UTC. <laughs> and that's when we can generally get the entire company together. It hurts our Australian friends, but uh, they sacrifice for these great moments. Um, at at eight at night um, in Your time, in, in, yeah. in England, basically, right? Um, yep. Eight at night in England, correct? Um, can you just talk through like what the experience is like for a customer with X Team? Because there are a couple questions. Um, you know, around that, like the video was so focused on culture. Can you just kind of talk through what the experience is, like what the integration process is for your engineers working with a company? Like, are there managed services involved? Just what that looks like from a, a service. Yeah, great question. I mean, we are as flexible as we need to be. So, I mean, every company is going to be different. Every engineering team is different. Every engineering manager is very different. And so they're all using different processes, different tools, et cetera. And so what we look for when we're hiring X teamers are people who have that same flexibility and that experience of working in 20 different uh, arrangements. And so these are people who can come in immediately and start adding value, regardless of what the setup and the arrangement is, regardless of, you know, if onboarding takes two weeks, because that can happen. You know, if, if they want us to work with a laptop that has to be shipped from LA to London uh, and it takes two weeks for that to happen, we're still finding, but those people are still finding as much as many ways as possible to add value, whether that's updating documentation or diving into uh, calls and, and trying to improve processes and whatever they can do to add value. So that's that's really our our, our MO, so to speak. Um, and, and really from, from that point on, after onboarding, they are really just an integrated part of your team and they're also an integrated part of our community. And so they're getting energy sort of both on both ends. Uh, and, and it's a really cool way of, of being a developer these days if you're going to work in the service industry final question i think everybody is asking right. this it, last one where do we apply i <laughs> wow <laughs> uh, no i mean just got, do talk about how your how your company is looking at at hiring during during the pandemic yeah it's interesting um we are definitely still hiring um and that's thanks to the companies that we work with and the companies that we're meeting that are all still hiring and so that's we're, we're very fortunate in that sense, and we're trying to give back and, and donating to a lot of food banks around the world to help give back during this time. But um, yeah, it's, I forgot the question I was at, how to apply? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. So, so, so we are hiring, and we're hiring primarily just developers. That's, that's this is providing developers. So if you are a developer, definitely apply. If you've got senior level type experience uh, and you've worked on a lot of great projects at, at scale, Definitely apply xteam.com slash join. You'll find it very easily. And uh, I, I hope we get to, to meet you as well and welcome you into this. Ryan, absolutely brilliant. What a what a great um, you know, what a great final talk to go into our break here. Thank you so much for everything. We'll see you soon. Yeah, sure. And I'm I'm going to uh, jump into the X Team booth if anyone has uh, more questions. So I'll see you there.